Greetings from the Philippines to the world. It's September 8, 5.02 p.m. here in Manila. And we are on Facebook Live on Eagle News and also watch this video on eaglenewslive.com. I am Cesar Vallejos. We are open for business. Join me discover the latest news and information in business around the world. Stay ahead of the curve from vision to action. The peso is 53.72 against the dollar. And at the closing of trade yesterday, the Philippine Stock Exchange Index closed at 7,598.64, down 40.07 points or 0.53%. Running your own business is a daunting task. There is a huge pressure to survive and grow. Entrepreneurs would always want to accelerate their growth. How can startups do this? What are the ways to expand the reach and network of startups? What types of content can promote the business and attract customers and increase brand recognition? What available tools can be used to efficiently grow your business? And how do you push your company to improve, advance, and grow? Later this afternoon, we will converse with the CEO and COO of startups and the advisor and shareholder of at least 12 more startups. But before we talk with Joji Azurin, who is also the Manila Director for Founder Institute, which is the world's biggest startup incubator, let's take a look at these business stories we've seen published this week. Inflation hits new nine-year high of 6.4%. Employment rate inches up to 94.6% in July. Philippine business sentiment at weakest since early 2010. Mega World to, be, to build JP Morgan headquarters in Fort Bonifacio. And European healthcare firms eye Philippine market. Here are the details. Inflation hits new nine-year high of 6.4%. Prices of food, especially rice, as well as seen products like cigarettes and alcoholic drinks, continue their climb in August such that the inflation rate surged to an over nine-year high of 6.4% year-on-year, risking to slow the country's economic growth. The latest Philippine Statistics Authority data released Wednesday showed that the rate of increase in prices of basic goods and services last month jumped at its fastest pace since the 6.6% posted in March 2009. Headline inflation in August was also higher than estimates of government and private sector economists who had projected the rate to fall within the range of 5.5% and 6.2% at most. Employment rate inches up to 94.6% uh, in July. More Filipinos gained jobs in July as the employment rate inched up to a 10-year high of 94.6%, the government reported on Wednesday. The Philippine Statistics Authority's July 2018 labor force survey showed that the rate of employed among those in the labor force composed of those 15 years old and above increased from 94.4% a year ago. In a statement, the State Planning Agency National Economic and Development Authority said the higher jobs rate last July translated into net generated employment of about 488,000, bringing the total employment to 40.7 million to date. The ambitious Build, Build, Build infrastructure program is also expected to create more employment opportunities moving forward. Business outlook on the economy turned less optimistic in the current quarter with the overall confidence index declining to 30.1%, the lowest level since the first quarter of 2010, the Banco Central ng Pilipinas said Thursday. Citing its latest business expectations survey, the central bank said the number of optimists declined but continued to be greater than the number of pessimists during the quarter. The confidence index is computed as the percentage of firms that answered in the affirmative, less the percentage of firms that, answer, uh, that answered in the negative with respect to their views on a given indicator. Respondents attributed their weaker sentiment during the third quarter to increasing prices of basic commodities in the global market, augmented by the effects of the implementation of the train law on prices of domestic goods. It added that businessmen were also put off by rising overhead costs and lack of supply of raw materials and seasonal factors such as 
the interruption of business activities and lower crop production during the rainy season, slack in consumer demand as households prioritize enrollment expenses, as well as the suspension of commercial fishing in the Vau Gulf from June to August. The situation was also aggravated by the weakening peso and stiffer competition. Mega World Corporation, the property development arm of businessman Andrew Tan on Tuesday, said it is constructing a 25-story build to uh, suit office building for the Philippine Global Service Center of J.P. Morgan Chase Bank. The building will have an estimated 70,000 square meters of gross leasable area. Mega World claimed it will become the country's biggest single office lease transaction in terms of total space leased to a single company and transaction value. According to Jericho P. Go, the company's senior vice president, the new home of J.P. Morgan Chase will consolidate its existing Metro Manila operations under one roof, all in a state-of-the-art prime and green office tower right at the heart of the booming uptown Bonifacio. To be completed in 2021, the tower will be ready for, for full operations by 2022. European healthcare firms I Philippine market. European healthcare firms are, are highly considering investing in the Philippines to take advantage of the country's developing health services industry. In a news release on Wednesday, the Board of Investments reported 50 European companies came on a business trip to the country to study the possibility of bringing in new medical technologies. The firms were mostly engaged in medical waste technology, laboratory equipment, cosmetics, dental products and supplies, pharmaceuticals, information technology solutions, telemedicine, and remote health monitoring, among others. Trade Undersecretary and BOI Managing Head Seferino Rodolfo Jr. said the possible entry of new healthcare players will bolster government efforts to improve the health sector. Total trade in healthcare, medical technologies, and related goods last year between the Philippines and the EU amounted to 1.1 billion pounds and is expected to increase further in the coming year. For new entrepreneurs and star uh, startups who are on the internet now, keep watching as our guest will give his ideas on how to jumpstart your business and achieve your goals. Georgie Azurin will tell us how. Stay tuned. Open for business. We'll be right back. his insights how startups work and how they can grow bigger and succeed ladies and gentlemen mr georgie azuri thank you for coming today. thank you thank you for inviting me here okay so uh we are very excited to have you here because uh there's a lot of uh startups already and a lot of uh, entrepreneurs out there who are very eager and very passionate to bring their ideas to life. Yes. But before we um, go into how to jump start startups, can you describe the ecosystem of the startup business? Because uh, we, we hear of startups, we hear of uh, accelerators and um, incubators. Yes. How, what's the ecosystem like in the world of startups? 
Um, of course, um, it all started in Silicon Valley, okay. where they a, a thriving startup community uh, uh, existed, okay. and then just like it, just um, without much planning or some planning, deliberate planning, some by just coincidence, the startup communities for for different cities around the world it just mm -hmm. it just blossomed. The mm -hmm. Philippines included. Mm -hmm. So, uh, a few years back, s people started to organize. Mm -hmm. And what's very important is large enterprises mm -hmm. started to build their own incubators. So that so that's how it, it it started. And 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 it's of course it's a very viable. It's a very live. Um, startup community we have here in the Philippines. Okay. So when you s say startup, Joji, it yes. is anything that is on, on, this, on a start phase of operations? Is that how, yeah. how do you define a startup? Well, typically for a startup, uh, there's a technology behind it always. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're using, you're developing technology mm -hmm. or even an e-commerce. That means you're selling goods. Mm -hmm. But you're s but you are using an e-commerce mm -hmm. platform mm -hmm. like Laz like Lazada, and Alibaba, e eBay, or Amazon. Correct. So uh, anything that uses technology, you, you you typically can declare that you're a startup. I and, see. And your question about the difference between incubator and, and, and accelerator. accelerator. Yes. Yes, there are. There is a difference. Okay. An incubator is if you have an idea. An incubator can help you build that idea into something already solid. Mm -hmm. An accelerator is typically you already have an existing business as an existing startup. I you just see. they it so that place will accelerate your business. It it you're now ready for more sales, more growth. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference between an incubator and an accelerator. So incubators and accelerators may have their own startups yes. or they just support startups, am I right? Both, both. I so see. there's really no rules whether you, you startup incubators and accelerators can require their, their startups to be within, within their location or okay. it could be online. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it doesn't matter for them. It really depends on on the accelerator and the incubator's uh, um, rules. I see. Interesting. Now, we also hear, Joji, a lot of uh, talk about the difference between startups and small and medium enterprises. Yes. So, what is now the difference between a startup and a micro, small and medium enterprises? Um, again, it's the technology. If you're using technology, there's a certain technology involved. Okay. Then you're you're typically considered as a, a startup. But if, if you're selling, if you're in a you're selling a food cart, okay, or a getting a franchise of a restaurant, okay. that's that's an SME. But okay. if you're you're beginning to use technology, I see. then you can say that you're a startup. I see. Interesting. So when you say uh, using technology, does yes. it mean, Georgie, that it has to be internet based or not necessarily? Most of the time, mm -hmm. it is, um, and it it, um, but I think for the vast majority, software is being used because software okay. run, yes. running software on PC does not have to be on the internet, but mm -hmm. vast majority would have to be online based. I see. Now, okay, let's now jump into um, the process of this putting up of a startup, yes. assuming I have an idea. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, here, and, and I don't have funds. Yes. So what is it, what will I do to find an incubator or yes. an accelerator That's for right. my idea? Okay, um, this is probably best practice, mm -hmm. but not necessarily the only way. Okay. First, it is important that you have a co-founder, at least one. Okay. Rarely does a startup get funding if mm -hmm. you're a solo entrepreneur because okay. uh, funders, angel funders or seed investors, they invest in you, your okay. group, but they'll, they, they won't be 
comfortable that they're just invert- investing in one person just in case something happens to him. So okay. there has to be at least two co-founders. That's the best practice. I'm not saying it is, is, the, it is the absolute okay. rule, but it's it's the best practice because you you may have shared values, mm-hmm. but you definitely have complementary skills. You mm-hmm. have shared values of long work, you know, mm-hmm. gung ho attitude, but complementary like you're techie, I'm the sales guy. Normally, it it's difficult. Rare to have both, so it's, yeah. It's so uh, jumping on that yes. uh, a concept, what are the what are the specific roles of the co-founder? So I am the the founder. Yeah. I have the best idea, and then I should look for a co-founder who is good into technology. Can you describe the roles of the co-founders? Um, again, there's no rules. Okay. Um, you, 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 as as probably the original, the, the guy with the original idea, maybe you have more skills. Okay. And then you bring in a programmer, you make him your technology partner. Mm-hmm. It can take a small percentage. Okay. But if you feel that, you know, sometimes it's the way you already discuss. You have a feel already that, okay, this guy is my equal. Probably, okay. Uh, we'll, we'll probably split the, the ownership. Okay. So it really depends. It's, it's so many... It's, there's so many ways to really make a decision. But mm-hmm. again, uh, best is for both to be full-time, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, can, you can have a day job, but mm-hmm. I've never seen a startup grow where everyone is, f- is part-time. There mm-hmm. will come a point where one or all co-founders, they have to go full-time. full-time. Yes. Oh, I see. Then um, a few more, few more tips is okay. um, always join the community. There mm-hmm. are many communities, but right now um, uh, there's a, there's a community for blockchain, there's a community for fintech, for ag- agri agritech. But the the general one would be the startup PH. Uh, well, there's one in Facebook. Mm-hmm. It's it's in the tens of thousands, and you just you're, you you just join, and there's so many so many announcements for for events mm-hmm. and and discussions. Mm-hmm. Then another one is always. Find mentors. Mm-hmm. That's very very important. Um, it's even though even for for me when I even start in my age, mm-hmm. I still ask somebody to for you know, mentors. Yes, mm-hmm. for for mentors because it's very simple. It's hard to look at the picture where you're inside it. Mm-hmm. You need yes. somebody saying, "Hey, you know, it's Correct. you're you're doing it wrong." So yeah, but but Georgie, when do you stop calling yourself a startup? Is <laughs> it the the phase yes. where you will finally incorporate it as a no, company or yeah. corporation, or because when you you establish a startup, yes. you know you can establish it like a, a sole proprietorship, right? Yes, With that's GTI. Right. So when do you mm. stop calling it a startup? <laughs> There's no definition. There's no clear definition of when you when you really say that you uh, you stop telling yourself that you're a startup. They yeah. said that uh, if you're already publicly listed, okay, you don't have to say that you're a startup. But there's mm-hmm. still a lot of startups that are already publicly listed. So uh, it it sticks for a while, you know, like Uber or Alibaba. They, you know, they're still being sometimes they're saying they're being tagged as, as, as a, uh, a unicorn startup, right? Okay. So there's no definition. <laughs> okay. But um, they said that probably in four years, if you're already doing some serious sales, you shouldn't be telling, saying yourself that you're a startup. Start telling everyone that you are a technology company. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay, let me backtrack again. So okay. uh, I have an idea. Yes. What? are normally the ideas that are presented to uh, an incubator or an accelerator or a Mm. co-founder and where do you get these ideas because you know it's it's very exciting to you know hear you talk about okay especially when we look at the uh, the mushrooming of the startups now yes yes where do you find that idea how do you push that idea uh, into fruition Okay, where, where do you get some startup ideas? Um, there's a survey in the Inc. magazine okay. uh, among 500 uh, CEOs. 23% of them got it from the industry that were, they were working. They, they, okay. It just happens that they've been there for quite some time and mm-hmm. they find 
they they find problems and they have solutions for that. So, um, you 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 can get a lot of ideas from the industry that you're you're mm -hmm. connected in right now. Then there there are a lot. Um, if if you're really trying to find, and you just couldn't f uh, figure out w where, mm -hmm. probably some areas is you can go to AngelList. AngelList is one of the biggest list of startups around the world it's in the thousands typically when you when you create a startup you you list it there because you're trying to look for for investments i see you you go you type health and then you get so many types of health startups in that in that website so that's one listening to ted okay, <laughs> okay. gives you ideas <laughs> okay that's right um and sometimes the smallest things like um complaints is a good you know, you, you hear some people complaining, and you can, what, what idea can I? Yeah. So basically, that, that? that's the, uh, that there's a problem, and yes. uh, that complaint is a problem, and then you find a solution for yes. it. Yes. And then you uh, create that idea based yes. on, uh, to, to create that startup. That's uh, right, yes. But earlier, George, you, I, yes. I heard you introduce new words again. Yes. You, you introduced uh, <laughs> the word angel, and yes. then you introduced the word, uh, the 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 phrase angel investor. What yes. is an angel in the in yes. the world of startups? That's right. Well, you know, what is <laughs> angel and what is an angel list or an angel okay. investor? That's right. So, it it these are these are people or companies that uh, that show up in, in your in the your face of your startup on the funding side. Like for example, okay. when you start your business, mm -hmm. when you start your business. Typically, you get it from your friends or family, mm -hmm. the funding. So you call it FFF. It okay. Friends, families, and fools. Okay. So yeah, it's it's a it's a joke, but it is. That's okay. what it, it that's what it means. So then, when you have an idea, it's already been working. Mm -hmm. You can have angel funders or seed funders. Angel, well, I think it's more like because they're like angels from heaven. You know, angels from oh, heaven to, to help you. To help you. Okay. Yes. Yes. So. Typically, they would put in fifty thousand dollars, hundred thousand dollars into your startup because they they see that it's is viable. that in, in the Philippines that's in pesos uh, in, or dollars in US yes. in US. In, in US. So uh, typically, what's the typical amount in the Philippines when uh, wh where uh, that seed funding you, is given? From, yeah, based on my experience, mm -hmm. yeah, anywhere from ten thousand dollars to. A hundred or two hundred thousand dollars. I've seen a number of startups uh, get ra raise that funds. And when I say angels or seed investors, these are people that the startups don't know. Mm -hmm. you know they they were just introduced. They were they went into a, in, a pitching uh, investment uh, conference mm -hmm. or, or meetup. Then they're the first one we can say that's uh, round one. Okay. You can have a number of rounds after after a year. Since you're still building it, you don't have revenues, you might get a round two okay. of a million dollars, of half a million dollars. And then when you're now poised for growth, okay. you, you're, you're ready, you already have, you, you're, you, you have a solid product now, you're now going to go to a next set of investors called mm -hmm. venture capital investors, okay. the VCs. And for VCs, again, it's Series A, Series B, and this is where you now get a million dollars, five million dollars, ten million dollars, thirty million dollars. But like for the case of Uber, Series D, he gets a billion dollars. So, wow. and then the final one, the final uh, phase. phase is you, you either, you either. So the final phase normally is an exit. It's it, it's typically it's a we call it a liquidity event mm -hmm. where you get acquired. I see by or by a, a by bigger yes. uh, company or oh, okay. get listed via IPO. I see. So that is a, a, a IPO or I, or or or, or get it's acquired. Out. Okay, yes, get that's out right. Okay. And the and what is very very important for people to know. They they probably just don't they they know but they don't realize that ninety five percent of startups are dressed for an acquisition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You always read in the news, right? Mm -hmm. Oracle buys this, Microsoft buys that. Mm -hmm. 
95% of the startups are always dressed for an acquisition. For technology startups, you never dream. You really dream that, oh, I'm mm -hmm. going to give this to my children and grandchildren. It's different. This is not your typical bakery or brewery or a mining company where you, you will your descendants will do it. The, the, the main difference is technology is a throwaway thing. It has an expiry date. A technology mo model has an expiry date. Five years from now, a younger guy is going to kick your A <laughs> <laughs> and introducing a much better one. So you, you better prepare yourself, in, in, generate as much market share as you could mm -hmm. and get acquired mm -hmm. or go for an idea. Is it really designed that way? Or you it think just it so just so happens that that it's it's it it hap it just so happens that it's like that I uh, see. you you always think that this huge companies oh they were acquired or or they were they were bought out but it's always been designed like that always and then when of course when you are uh, when there is a buyout if there is an acquisition sometimes yes. you are still given a role or there are times that you yes. have entirely no uh, connection already it, with your it idea. It depends on the negotiations. Is sometimes we call it the acquire. An acquire is the company acquires your company not just for the technology okay. and revenue, but for the people, they the talent. Because if they acquire this company, they feel the acquiring company feels that mm -hmm. they the, they will their value will enhance by bringing in this this people. Okay, and it's they the resource, entice, the human That's resource. right. So they okay. entice them that. You know, we'll give your shares also in our company on top of what how much we paid you. So, that that's the game for the technology startups. Okay. Now, uh, just to add. Okay. You, Go ahead. I said five ninety five percent, right? Yes. Who's the five percent? Yes. They're the ones buying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Interesting. Uh, is that also the uh, the the ratio here in the Philippines, or uh, you, that's you, a general? Yeah, you can one? see you can see sometimes the. Some telco companies or oh, some okay. mostly telco, the telco or the conglomerates yes. buying some technology companies you read mm -hmm. from time to time, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. So that's that's what's happening. So for a technology startup, like for us, if we're already doing, we're already on the VC level. Okay. As a matter of fact, part of my role as a CEO for if I'm a growing company. Mm -hmm. My job is not just to generate sales okay. and to build business. I'm going around shopping already for somebody to buy us. Oh, I see. And that's also the role. The you, you you would think that the VC companies, the VCs, their job is to just put money. No, when they when they invest in you, mm -hmm. like for example, if I ha I'm a healthcare company, okay. when they invest in you, as a matter of fact, because they already have a rolodex of large pharma all healthcare companies already that are that could be their potential mm -hmm. they they have close relationships so when they buy they started to bring you now to to these companies and every normally every quarter these small companies get to report already to these large companies says we we performed this we did this and then are we good enough and then mm -hmm. the other companies say yeah good but you know can you do more so until one of these days someone will say yeah, we like to buy you. So uh, that's okay. how that's how it's being played. Wow, that's very interesting. <laughs> okay, um, let me go through the process. You said uh, yes. we do the startup first, uh, first, and yes. then after that, um, normally there is a series of uh, seed rounds yes. where the, you the, uh, you are given a certain amount of money. Yes, and then after that. Uh, uh, the next step would be the venture capitalists, That's right. where you are given a higher uh, much, much investment. Bigger, yes. Now, what is, uh, why would the, um, uh, what will the um, angel investors or the venture capitalists see in you yes. in a startup to make sure that they keep, you know, giving you funding? Okay. Uh, starting with FFF. Okay. Right. They believe in you because they're your son, <laughs> they're your friend, and that that kinds of clouds their judgment, rather. But because the the mom invests because he's 
he only sees us as the best businessman in the world. Okay, so that's number one. <laughs> okay. For Seed and Angel, they really believe in you. Okay. They, 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 they see you. Mm-hmm. Probably you have an experience. You have a track record that 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 works well. They invest in you as the person. Okay. A venture capital is different. Venture capital is they're they're investing in management in you, but okay. they're already investing in 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 a business operation already because it's already running. Okay. Uh, in and. Uh, a good number of them sometimes require that we're putting in money, but we need to be in the board and we have a say. I see. So, for so some when you say they have a say, they have a say in operations, they have as, a say as in board, marketing. As board of directors, they get to vote. Mm-hmm. They get to they get to approve your plans. Mm-hmm. And and they're lining you up for to become more corporate. Mm-hmm. Because like I said, they want to sell you. Mm-hmm. They're I dressing see. you up for an acquisition. <laughs> And it's not common. It's not uncommon when, if they feel that the CEO, who is the founder, mm-hmm. is not up to the job already for running a big corporation, okay. you can even see some CEOs who were the original founders resigning because wow. they were they were um, they were forced mm-hmm. or they were encouraged by the VCs to say, uh, "Step aside. We need we need the adults." To come <laughs> it, it did happen okay. before in Google and mm-hmm. in Yahoo, right? You know, Jerry Young, I think, or the, yes. the, the other younger guys had to step down and bring in some other adults because okay. that's where the VC companies already stepped in. I see. Yes. I see. <laughs> okay, we have uh, a lot of questions when open for business returns. Stay tuned. And still with me is Joji Azurin, the Manila Director of uh, Founder Institute. It's a very exciting conversation because uh, we thought that you know startups are simply just that Businesses. startups. Yes. Uh, but uh-huh. there is a, a, a process that has to be done, and yes. you have to be very keen and very observant about you know uh, yes. you know what's happening in the industry. That's right. So one of the many questions that my friend Kyle sent me is: um, Are there more or less active investors now than before? Um, more. Yes, there are more investors right now. Uh, not just your FFF, okay. <laughs> your family, friends, right. and uh, yes. Pools, but there are already uh, a good number of um, conglomerates or large corporations wanting to invest. And this is what I noticed. Not because me, of course, because of technology that we were very interested, but sometimes these captains of industries that yeah. are already in their you know in their retirement age, they're also forced or they, they have to change. Because they send their kids, these rich tycoons, they send their kids to Yale, Princeton, Stanford. They come back, and, and it's a common thing. They come back, and the, the kids don't want to run their father's corporations. Okay. Because they said that that's an old technology. <laughs> okay. And it presents... Is that typical? I, I've seen a good number of situations where it... it, it Puts the parent into a bind, <laughs> okay. But the the parent, you know, he's not a captain of industry for nothing. So he invests in technology startups, okay. where his children are interested in. So to loop them back in, you know. <laughs> so are you saying also, Georgie, that normally the ones who start the startups are the uh, the ones who are young as us? Or the <laughs> there, well, there's because no we, we, we've seen a lot of millennials yes, go into the yes. fray. You know yeah. what's normally the uh, it's, it's, it, age bracket. It doesn't have any age limit. That's that's for sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm a testimony to testament to 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 someone who keeps on starting companies and uh, starting them young is also important. It doesn't mean that 
you're, 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 you're not starting it young means you're not too late. No, that's not true. You can still be 10 years, 15 years in the corporate mm -hmm. life and then move into startups. There, there's no rules for that. Mm -hmm. So you can you can start up anytime, mm -hmm. even if you're retired. Mm -hmm. um, but if, of course, it requires so much energy, intellectual and emotional energy, mm -hmm. uh, Effort, so yeah, because as you said, you it's it's inevitable that you have to work, you know, really full time if you're into yes, that. Yes. But m m my question, Georgie, is um, maybe without even without citing the the brands, but uh, can you present um, case studies and what did you do to really make that startup grow? Technically, how did I know how you uh, how how to jumpstart that startup? Uh, which one? Well, my, one of my startups or your uh, case studies? Yes, your your own uh, uh, in your own uh, experience. Um, well, we have a startup that, that it's an e-commerce mm -hmm. and uh, of physical goods. So, uh, the CEO that we brought in is a twenty-year veteran on logistics. Okay. So it was easy for us because he already knows what to do. Okay. Um, it's it's st we're he's still pushing for products, but mm -hmm. instead of being uh, instead of the orders via stores or via phone, it's online. Online. Okay. And and that's easy. Okay. At the end of the day, it's still the business of lo for for e-commerce still the business of logistics. Okay. And, and so number one, you tap the uh, existing network, yes. and then the second one is you. Uh, make it automated by uh, online yes, so right. what else how, how how did you really push it uh, another, another one is um, uh, it's 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 just my my preference i always prefer to go into new technologies mm -hmm. like blockchain yes um, I, I i i'm very interested in in new technologies so there's a there's a lot of learning involved so mm -hmm. i try to learn as much i try to talk to us again i try to to join a community, mm -hmm. get mentors, and mm -hmm. then try to do pilot. Uh, so I'm, because of probably that's that's how I am, I like to clear the path rather than follow a proven path. So mm -hmm. uh, it really depends on 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 who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm comfortable with that, so. But, but speaking of blockchain, as you mentioned, Georgie, yes. what specific uh, complaints or problems will be solved Yes. For new startups. Okay, for 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 that, that's a good example. Like for us, can I mention my? Okay, go okay, ahead. Okay, my medics. Like go ahead, I'll charge you medics, later. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, like <laughs> medicserve.com. Uh, it's the the complaint, of course, is you're a patient. You you have multiple records in many hospitals. Okay. Blockchain makes it possible for for you in your app to see all your medical records from different hospitals. Blockchain makes it possible. And and of course it's easy for me to say, but for but but it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of coordination. Uh, blockchain is a new technology. But how will that uh, be seen vis-a-vis uh, vis -a -vis, uh, the uh, Data Privacy Act? So is, does yes. that uh, uh, address that area yes as, well? uh, as a matter of fact data privacy act was good news because now it's it says that patients own their data okay that that means yes. doctors hospitals have to open them up mm -hmm. and but the question now is they're willing to open them up but how mm -hmm. so it's the blockchain can solve that that mm -hmm. it can easily connect now that's mm -hmm. why data privacy law was good news for the patient mm -hmm. so now imagine all your information, you can access everything there. So when you go to a doctor, your doctor can see a complete record of mm -hmm. your medical history. Mm -hmm. That's, it's a very simple solution, but it was, a diff, you know, it mm -hmm. took years just to reach at this point where you can mm -hmm. see your records on your, mo on your mobile. And phone. that's right, because, you know, most of the time your records are with a hospital or with a doctor. Yes. But what you're saying now, with your technology, it's right before, it's right before uh, on your, on your yes. mobile. Yes, on, on your mobile. And before, the doctor would say, okay, you went to this hospital, I need those records. You went to this diagnosis, get me those lab results. You have I to go see. back. And mm. the doctor said, okay, I'm free two weeks from now. 
I see. And everything yes. is on digital. Yes. So yeah, it's yes. digital copies. That's right. Okay. So, um, speaking of uh, that, uh, of course, the private sector is thriving. And yes. then you, you are uh, telling me that uh, with all these investors, capitalists, they really put in a lot of uh, money and effort and support. Speaking of the government, of mm -hmm. course, there are some initiatives also of uh, the government. Like, for example, um, uh, we guested Assistant Secretary Jean Bacheco here, and mm -hmm. she really talked about uh, the ease of uh, doing business, yes. how technology now uh, shortens the process That's of right. doing business. Yes. It's easier now. So would you think uh, the government is also providing um, good opportunities mm -mm. for startups to thrive in the Philippines? Um, they, they already started. That's good. I mm -hmm. think that's good news. Of okay. course, we need more. Okay. Uh, I, I would commend the ICT, DTI, DOST, mm -hmm. because they've been, they've been helping us startups. Mm -hmm. And, and um, of course, for new technologies like BSP, and mm -hmm. SEC, mm -hmm. for them to come up with regulations on blockchain, that is good news. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're moving. I think, for to be to be fair with them, they're moving. Uh, of course, we need more. Mm -hmm. um, we we probably just need to look at our neighbors mm -hmm. for to how, how they're they're treating their startups, mm -hmm. in because we were a guest in Singapore government's startup program so they, they they toured us there as, as to, to see how the government programs are imagine the incentive for the government is you you want you want your, your startup we'll give you funding you wow. need office okay then if we have a government project up for bidding yes. if you're a startup your priority that's good news and yes. that's in singapore that's in singapore <laughs> okay unfortunately <laughs> but again it it it's it it's good that we see these models and and that we we, we need to to have them here in in, in the philippines uh, so so even if it even singapore there are um government initiatives to that effect in the philippines uh, who do who should they look for is there a like say a direct of uh, angel investors out there, a directory of venture capitalists? None as of the moment. Um, well, I think DIST, OST, and DICT, I think, try to, to put a list, but uh, uh, not sure not sure about that. So typically for us startups, here is the thing. when If you're a startup, like I said, if you join a community or get mentors, okay. normally uh -uh. you would know who would be the investors. That's mm -hmm. why... Joining a community is very, very important. Or joining an incubator mm -hmm. or an accelerator is important because this, this community or this incubators and accelerators, they already know who to provide, to, to point you to the right investors. Assuming I am in the search of an accelerator or incubator, yes. if I am a startup, I, yep. I want to... I, I, I want to uh, you know, establish a startup. Yes. What is my criteria as well in choosing uh, um, the uh, appropriate which, incubator or accelerator? There's none. <laughs> uh, there, there's no criteria. Sometimes you know, sometimes startups just apply because they they you don't get it easily accepted. Okay. You know, this is not an op It's not an open. It's not an open ad admission. Yeah. How do you yeah. get accepted? What, uh, what's your, for, what's your, for the uh, case of Founder Institute, okay, be yes. because I'm the Manila director. So again, Founder Institute, uh, as we said, is the world's largest incubator mm -hmm. for startups. We've we finished more than, I think, close to 4,000 startups around the world. Wow. It's, it's based in Silicon Valley. And uh, popular startups like Udemy is one of the graduates. Okay. It's, it's quality education because... Whatever you the Udemy founders studied is mm -hmm. the same courseware that you're studying here in in Manila. Wow! Um, and so what are you looking for? We uh, well, <laughs> we, it's again if it's technology. <coughs> excuse me. If it's a technology, anything that's connected to technology would be good, but you still have to pass the entrepreneur exam. I see. <laughs> and the exam only twenty five percent pass as a global average. 
So, what's that uh, entrepreneur exam? It's like a, 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 a typical written exam or is it's there an a It's an online panel? exam. It's an online exam that was developed by the Founder Institute's uh, uh, founder, Adeo Resi. Mm -hmm. So, he's a popular figure in, in Silicon Valley. He's the... This is, it's popular because he's also the re roommate of Elon Musk. Oh, they were roommates. Oh, so oh, they, interesting. Yeah, so he developed this. It's kind of controversial because some sectors are saying you can figure you can figure out an entrepreneur by just taking an exam. But he said, but you know, he's claiming that it's it's accurate. So we're we're using that. Well, it it it, it seems accurate for us here here because it it does it does filter out mm -hmm. only the only the entrepreneurs that we see, mm -hmm. then here the commitment is if you're in a day job, when the next, within the next three or four months during the incubation period, we expect you to resign. We're, wow. we, you, we, we always say that we're not a collection of certificates that mm -hmm. you, um, we expect you to resign because mm -hmm. we, you, you, don't, you don't waste our time. You mm -hmm. know why? Because we're not being paid. It, this mm -hmm. is our, just our... This is just our it's contribution like a, a, to the advocacy. It's, it's our advocacy. Each director are of all founder institutes around the world. Mm -hmm. It's it's our advocacy to help the community. Then when you're in, you're not yet in. <laughs> oh. Forty percent only make it. So from twenty five percent to uh, forty percent out of the twenty five percent who yes. passed. Okay. Yes. So so that's about right. I think a hundred. Uh, almost a hundred uh, Filipinos apply, mm -hmm. and roughly twenty-five percent times forty. That's it. Roughly nine finish every year, and that's <laughs> that. Uh, that nine um, passers yes. will be the one who will pitch to uh, their ideas to you. Is that it, or uh, they have already? We help their... them develop during the next three to four months. As a matter I of fact, see. some mentors. Mm -hmm. Some mentors are already investors, or we already have investors looking at their pitches even a month while they're there. Oh, I see. It's 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 a very rigorous period for for them, mm -hmm. and we say that you know it's it's a it's it's difficult, and we say don't complain because once you're done here, it's going to be a much more difficult phase for you now that they're gone. Not, not, not Now that we're gone and you're going to develop mm -hmm. this on your own, mm -hmm. it's difficult. <laughs> okay. Uh, and we, some of them did get, did get uh, uh, funding and, and the, the graduates are some of the toughest startups in, in the Philippine uh, uh, startup community. And very interesting, but yeah. how, how broad profitable is is this uh, for startups how, how profitable is it for for them compared to of course we encourage entrepreneurship okay and uh, you know uh, with uh, I, I reported the earlier the uh, employment rate going high uh, yep. higher now yes. so uh, I uh, based on our discussion it really provides uh, it, it supports the passion for entrepreneurship yes that's so right. but how profitable is it would they be able to buy a uh, 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 you know, um, uh, uh, maintain a, a modest living, a car, a house, uh, uh, <laughs> okay. a tour of the world. Um, I'm just trying to, you know, to exaggerate, but profit is the is a non-existent word in startups. Interesting, <laughs> mainly because uh, Amazon was profitable after 15 years, oh, 20 years. Okay, Uber is not yet profitable. Oh, right. interesting. Um, Instagram, was it Instagram? They were acquired mm -hmm. without even revenues. So I, I could say that in technology startups, profitable is not, profit is not the focus. Traction, number of users, revenue, mm -hmm. market share. Mm -hmm. that, those are the, 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 the key growth mm -hmm. factors. Um, profit is a surprising input for you because they will say oh my god you are great if you're profitable so mm -hmm. the the this, this is why you have the series of funds I why see. why get funding if you're already profitable yeah so it's always a milestone it's always a milestone for the next funding 
mm-hmm. and you may be acquired for a hundred million dollars for a billion dollars without even seeing any profits. Well, but when you are acquired, it's big time. Correct? It's already big time, yes, okay. because you already develop a, probably a large number of customers. Mm-hmm. Um, I, again, I'm not saying 100% of the of the startups are not profitable. Of course, a good number of them are. Yes. But that is the that's the guiding principle. That's the reason why majority are are, are getting funding. Of course, there's a good number of percentage are getting funding because they're profitable. They now want to increase their market size. Mm-hmm. But that's the, the majority are not profitable. Okay, interesting to know. And yes. uh, talking of that, another question from my friend Kyle here. Mm-hmm. How do you know when to give up on a startup? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> what are the warning signs that a startup or a yes. co-founder is not working out and you just um, want to have an early exit? It's really, you must be very, very resilient because um, statistically you're, you'll fail. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you say you're a startup, you know, probably you're, 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 you're going to fail, mainly because only 5% mm-hmm. succeed. Mm-hmm. That means if I'm going to st- tell somebody, tells you, Georgie, hi, I'm a startup. I'm mm-hmm. already looking at, pot- at a potential failure. Mm-hmm. That, that's, that's the cold reality. And I could only say that of the 10, 10 founders that I'm looking right now, only half a person is going to be mm-hmm. successful. That is how, how, how grim... The, the prospects are and so for for you to 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 give up mm-hmm. is okay mm-hmm. it's not a, a shameful thing to do and it now really depends on the person on on how he he's going to go through this because the obstacles are just they're they're really the obstacles are high the, the bar on, on that is note really, yeah. very high. on that and note Georgie uh, what is your message to startups? Uh, what, no. uh, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of uh, maybe right. even after the show they'll email you <laughs> and they'll email me and look yes. for your contact. But yes. you know what's what's your advice to them? Uh, my advice is of course never give up, mm-hmm. especially if you feel that uh, this is this is something that you you believe in. Failure is just fine tuning. It, it's fine tuning to the next to the next step. You 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 use you use failure as a tool for improvement. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, my tip is join the community, get a mentor as much as possible. Join an incubator; it's going to help a lot. And um, and yeah, basically that's it. You know, it's there. It's not. Don't worry. There's help. The 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 startup community is strong were helpful. Mm-hmm. I mean, me like for me to put in my time to help mm-hmm. the other startups. I'm just one of the many hundred mm-hmm. people in in the startup community just really putting our time here. Mm-hmm. You know, just just helping everybody because our motto is a rising tide lifts all boats. Wow. Wow. That's uh that's something um, very helpful, and uh, you know, you you provided a lot of insights to uh, entrepreneurs and startups who are uh, watching, and uh, I hope that we can invite you again in the future to shed sure, light sure, and probably to pleasure. highlight, you know, one of the successful startups here yes. in the Philippines. Okay, thank you. Thank you for watching, and um, we will be right back. We hope that entrepreneur startups are perked up with uh, Joji's insights and start to make greater ideas in growing their business. Our term of the week and our inspiring words when open for business returns. Stay tuned. for business in our term of the week you take a refresher of business terms to make you updated more informed and ready to make smarter business decisions in the world of startups our term of the week is exit exit in the world of startups is how startup founders get rich 
It's a method by which an investor and or entrepreneur intends to exit their investment in a company. Common options are an IPO or buyout from another company. Entrepreneurs and VCs often develop an exit strategy while the company is still growing. We end our webisode with a quote of the day. And uh, our quote of the day, today's words are from Nolan Bushnell, a technology pioneer, entrepreneur, and engineer. Often cited as the founder, uh, the father of the video game industry, he is best known as the founder of Atari Corporation and Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater. The critical ingredient is getting off your butt and doing something. It's as simple as that. A lot of people have ideas, but there are few who decide to do something about them now. Not tomorrow, not next week, but today. The true entrepreneur is a doer, not a dreamer. Join us again next Saturday, 5 p.m. Philippine time for another episode of Open for Business, where we discuss business information, deliver the latest business news to keep you informed and open for business and be ahead of the curve from vision to action. We are on Facebook Live on Eagle News and you can watch this again in the video section of the Eagle News Facebook page and on eaglenewslive.com. And also visit postinglive.com for news and updates on Open for Business. Catch me later at 9 p.m. on Net25's Eagle News International as I report more business news here and around the world. For Open for Business, this is Cesar Vallejo. Have a great day.